Who Told You? we like to thank Dr. Marjorie Wilson, the founder of Who Told You? Who Told You can be seen every Sunday morning, 10.30 to 11 a.m. on Comcast 20, and also online on bgntvgospel.com every day of the week. Hi, I'm Dr. Loretta Bledsoe from God's Anointed Ministry, and I'm sitting in for my friend and minister, Collar Ghostin. Understand that it's no accident that you're here today and you're watching the show, but it's all by God's design. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we just honor you and we thank you, O oh God, for this opportunity. We thank you for this set time, O oh God, that your word will go forth. We pray for every listener, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you would move upon them, Lord God, that this word would be energy to them. It would be life to them. It would be insight to them. It would be revelation to them, O oh God, and it would be strength to them. So, Lord God, go into every place of their being, O oh God, and fortify them. Strengthen, heal, and deliver. Oh God, we pray for families this morning. We pray for unity of families, Lord God. We destroy the works of the enemy. We cancel every assignment of the enemy to steal, kill, and destroy. We cancel the assignment for confusion, oh God, in the family in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we ask that you, your spirit and the angels will go oh, to and fro in the city of Detroit, oh God. We bind every activity of the enemy. Oh God, let God arise and your enemies be scattered. Oh God, step in every situation and circumstance. We need you and we need you now. Oh God, that you would deliver and heal. Make us whole, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Unstoppable Stick us, oh God. Some of us are stuck, oh God, and we've been in a place of procrastination, oh God. A place, oh God, that we're not moving, oh God. Oh God, we cancel, oh God, oh God. Help, hope deferred, oh God. That the hope would no longer be deferred, oh God. But that we walk according to your revelation, according to your truth, according to your spirit. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare to be so, so it is, and so shall it manifest. And in Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we thank God. Hallelujah, glory to his name. Today, I want to talk a little bit about putting on the whole arm of God. Because we understand the time that we're in. We're in a time that we've never, ever been in before. We've never been in this situation before. We know that things has changed. It's not shifting. It has changed. And so now we have to change and shift our mindset and not only the warfare to be conducive to the time. Amen. And so we know that in Ephesians 6 verses starting at the 10th verse, I'm going to start reading. And it talks about putting on the whole armor of God. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, Take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, 
that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Amen and amen. I'm going to just break down for you about putting on the whole arm of God. Many times we try to do things in our own strength, but it's not by power nor by might, but it's by his spirit, saith the Lord. And so when we try to do things in our own strength, sometimes it sort of wear us out because this is saying it's not my strength, but it's the Lord's strength. It says be strong. That means be empowered, be enabled in who? The Lord. Our real strength comes from the Lord because he is the only absolute. His strength is unlimited, whereas mine is limited. And so we put on, we be strong in him because he has unlimited strength. And it says in the power of his might, that means in the power of his ability, his strength. It says put on the whole, that means the entire, the complete armor of who? Of God. It's not my armor, it's God's supernatural armor that he equips us with. Why? So we will be able, that means that we will have sufficient power, we will be skillful, we will be resourceful, we will accomplish and capable and worthy and fit for that which he would have us to do. And what is he telling us to do? He says stand. And the Greek that word stand means to continue, to establish. Let his will be done what? In earth as it is in heaven. That's an establishment. And he says because it's against who? We're, we're in opposition not of people, but we're in opposition of the enemy. It says the wiles. Wiles means trickery, the methods, the strategies, the intended snares, the deceitful entrapments of the enemy. He says, how, how does it normally happen? How does the enemy normally set up this trapment? Entrapment is normally through deception through lies, through the spirit of seduction. The methods are systems, and that system involves timing. It involves places. It involves people. And normally, it's through three main vehicles. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Normally, when we get caught up, is in one of those areas, normally. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And also, beloved, be careful of your feelings. Feelings are up, they're down, they're sideways. One day I'm feeling this way, one minute I'm feeling that way. So we cannot make decisions, sound decisions, godly decisions, based on our feelings. Because... Our feelings are just, they flaky sometimes. I mean, just admit it, our feelings are flaky sometimes. Remember that the enemy wants to steal, kill, and destroy. He will make something seem like it's good until he traps you in his snare. And then when he traps you in his snare, then the real deal comes out, the real truth comes out. For example, and this is men or women. Remember you met that person, and he was like, oh wow, oh they all that. Then after went a little while longer, after they got you, then all this other stuff co started coming out. And you would say, well you wasn't like this when I met you. Yes, they were. We just told them, gave them ammunition to know about you, and we told them what they wanted to know, and they became what we said. Then once they got us, they, the real them started coming out. So we can't go by our feelings. We have to always pray, and we always have to always be on guard and listening to the Holy Spirit because he reveals truth. There is nothing good about the devil. You can't play patty cake with him. 
You can't like crack the door open because he's going to break it open himself. Once you do that crack, he's going to knock it wide open because he is a deceiver and he uses trickery every time. So we can't play footsies with him. There is no truth in him. He, there's no life in him. There is no goodness in him. His motive and intent is always to set you up to fail. His motive and intent is to kill, to kill your dreams, your hopes, to kill that which God has placed on the inside of you, to steal from you, and to destroy you. That's his motive and intent. But the word of God says in John 10:10, 10, 10, Jesus said, I have come that you will, might have life and that more abundantly. That means exceedingly. You would have life more abundantly. And the Bible goes on to say, we don't wrestle. We don't combat against flesh and blood. That is not our fight. Yes, we do get mad at people, be like, I don't know who they think they are treating me like that. We go through those changes, but understand this, the spirit behind what the person is doing. They're, they're just acting out what the spirit is, 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 you know, enforcing in them. And says, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. That's not your fight. But it goes on to say principalities. What is a principality? It's first rank. It is a magistrate. It's an official exercising governmental powers and authority over a nation, over a region. That's what a principality is. For example, you can go in one area of the city and you feel in the atmosphere one thing. Go out of that area and you'll feel something else. There are different principalities over different regions and areas influencing the dynamics of that area or that neighborhood. It says we wrestle also against powers. What are powers? That's a force. That's a delegated influence and authority, jurisdiction, or strength. We wrestle against rulers of the darkness. That's authorities of darkness, of this world. Spiritual wickedness, where? In high places. This wickedness is depravity, is malice, is sin. It's plots, it's iniquity. We're in high places. Atmospheric, it's celestial, it's in the heavenlies. That's what we wrestle against. We are commanded to stand. We're commanded to put on the entire, complete armor of God. And then it goes on to stay withstand. Withstand in the Greek means to stand against, but it also means to resist. The word of God in James 4 and 7 says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Many times say resist the devil and he will flee. Many times people say that. No, it says submit to God. Why? Because God is your power. God is your source. God is your way. God has a limited power. That's why it says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Then it goes on to say to do all to stand. That means to use all of your weaponry, all of your weaponry in order to stand. It is commanded to stand. How? How does he tell us to stand? He says, having your loins girt about with truth. Your loins is fastened. It's like a belt fastened around you to hold things together. And John 8, 32, Jesus said, if you continue in his word, we will know the truth and the truth shall make us free. Amen. Not set us free, make us free. That means that denotes a process. He goes on to say to have on the breastplate of righteousness. That means that my heart is guarded. David said in Psalms 119.11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. He says, go on and say, in having your feet shod, that's bound with the preparation of the gospel of peace. 
And we're commissioned in Mark 16, 15, what? To go and to spread the gospel. So everywhere that you go, you're to spread the gospel. And he said, above all, he said, take the shield of faith. So you will be able, you will be equipped to quench. That means to extinguish, to put out all the fiery darts of the enemy. That fiery dart may be anger. That fiery dart may be grief. That fiery dart may be lust. Whatever it may be to, to extinguish, to snuff it out with the shield of faith. Then he goes on to say to put on the helmet of salvation. This implies protection for my head, my mind. Let this mind be in me, which is also in Christ Jesus, our Lord, to protect my head. My head, the implication also, the head is also the place of authority. Jesus broke, annihilated the authority of Satan, the headship of Satan. So he goes on to say, also, you take the sword, which is the word of God. The sword is the punishment aspect of the spirit. And the word of God, he, that means the rhema of God, the utterance of God. So we are, we're not only defensive, we're offensive. And it gave me the example of football. When you have the football, you're not only, you're, you're going up against the, op, the opposing team. Not, you don't stand there, you just don't stand there, but you go against the opposing team, and you press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. You press towards that thing, that thing that God told you to do that you should have been doing. Press in the name of Jesus. You press in the name of Jesus. So you're not only offensive, you're defensive. You're defensive. So you're moving toward that thing that God has called you to. You're moving toward it. There are strategies involved in you moving toward that thing. So he goes on and commands us. He said, pray always. Pray always. How do we pray? We pray audibly. We pray silently. We pray loudly. We pray consistently. Man ought to always pray. Because that is a tool that, is a, that equips you to be able to communicate with God. That, that sets you in a place that you can get strategies from the Holy Spirit as to what to do, how to do, when to do. Strategies. We become an instrument of prayer. And he says supplication in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. He said watching with all perseverance with all diligence, with all persistence, in continuation for all saints. Amen? No matter what it looks like, that we are, we are commanded to stand. We are commanded to withstand. We're commanded to occupy. We're commanded to take territory. But he's telling us, you need the whole armor of God. I need the whole armor of God so that I can stand and withstand, so I can press, so I can go through in the name of Jesus. That I may be able to speak boldly the mysteries of the gospel. Not holding anything back, saying, Lord, use me. Use me whichever way you want to use me. Use me. Not holding anything back because I'm representative of my Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That which God has placed on the inside of us, He wants it back. He, he placed gifts and talents and abilities on the inside of us. And he's coming back. It's just like with the talents. He, some of you, he's given three. Some of you, he's given five. But whatever he's given you, he wants you to invest that. That means you're supposed to give it. That means you're supposed to say it. That means you're supposed to go in the name of Jesus. Wherever God has told you to go. We use the weapons of our warfare. 
And 2 Corinthians 10 and 4, for we know, 4 through 6, we know that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We know that praise and worship and prayer are, is, is our arsenal that we can use, part of the arsenal that God has given us to use in this warfare. Now we all suited up. We have on the whole arm of God. We praise and we worship. Why? Because in Psalms 8 and 2, and not only in Matthews 21 and 16, it says, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained what? Praise. Why? To steal the enemy, to shut him down, and the avenger. That's what your praise does. That's one of the things in your arsenal. And prayer. Prayer. Pray without ceasing. Advancing the kingdom of God. Beloved, be ye staff fast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain. Understand it ain't over till God says that it's over. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it smells like. I don't even care who's coming up against you. For whoever comes, that God is for you. When God is for you, is more than anything that can be against you. There's nothing that can come up against you that will prosper when we're in line and in alignment with God's will, his purpose for our lives. So understand, beloved, we're in a time that we've never, ever been in before. We cannot do things the same way that we did before. Even when it comes to prayer, we can't do things the same. Why? Because things have changed. Things have changed. And so the only way we're going to make it, God has given us his word. For his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. But understand, you got to turn that lamp on so that that path will be illuminated with light. God is calling us to another place, to a higher place, to a deeper place in him, to be steadfast and immovable. He's calling us to put on the whole armor of God so that not only can we stand, but we can withstand everything of the enemy. Beloved, remember, if you don't remember anything else, that you were created on purpose. God did not make a mistake when he created you. There's close to 7.4 billion people in the world and there's nobody like you. Can't nobody do what you do. And even if they do the same thing, it won't be like you. You were created on purpose. You were created with purpose. You are created for a purpose. Don't waste what God has given you to give. Jesus, he left a legacy. And that legacy is you. So do all to stand. Use your arsenal. Use what he's given you. Prayer, praise, and worship. And put on the entire complete armor of God that you may be able to stand in these evil days that you'll be able to give a word when it's needed that you'll be able to pray at a drop of a hat why because you're standing in agreement with God you're agreeing with everything he's called you to do to be to have every place he's called you to go Understand that you are his legacy. Amen? Amen. God bless you. And turn again to Who Told You So on Sunday mornings on Comcast on Channel 20 from 1030 to 11 and also a BGN TV gospel on the Internet. You can find it any day of the week. You were created to be in the image of the living God. 
He's awesome. He's magnificent. Nobody can do you like God can do you. Understand whatever you're going through, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. And so turn your attention away from the situation and the circumstance and turn your attention toward the living God, the creator of all things, the one that can grab hold and step into that situation and turn everything around. For the Lord created you in his likeness and in his image. And there is no other image and no likeness better than his image. The creator of all things. That there is no failure in God. He can do anything but fail. Know that he loves you. Know that he's with you. Know that he's for you. And know, beloved, it's not about you being perfect. It's about that he loves you right where you are. He loves you just who you are. He knows how to get you from point A to point B. So sometimes we think we all have to have it all together before we come to the Lord. But no, now is the time to come to the Lord. If you're not saved today, if you don't know Jesus today, just confess in your heart and, in your, and with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you shall be saved. For he is your God and your Lord. God bless you. Amen. My name is Mike Duggan and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy D. Hattie watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves and you're watching the Bell Global Network. What's going on y'all, it's Mr. Bell. Some know me as Anton Quarboy Bell. Others know me as Elder Anton Bell. I am co-CEO of Bell Global Network, BGN TV 2090. And I want to invite you right now to get your own broadcast. I'm calling all ministers, all politicians, all business owners. Get your own broadcast right now. Start at $99. And if you have an idea for a TV show, we can bring your idea to reality. We have packages available that include production, and facilities. Also, we have advertising packages starting at through those $25. So don't hesitate. Give us a call at 313-355-7877. Once again, that's 313-355-7877 to make an appointment today. Global Network. Hi, everybody. I'm telling you, everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. I'm Evelyn Turrentine, AG, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock of Preachers of Detroit, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times, and you are watching Bell Global Network. <laughs> 